Welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Well, it's been another gorgeously hot day and uh, the ground's now dry enough to put some seeds in, so welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment. Now I built this bed a couple of years ago and I basically built it to put carrots in, um, but I found that um, it's, it's basically far too big to uh, uh, completely fill with carrots, we just don't eat that many carrots, so what I tend to do now is to put carrots in most of it and then I'll grow something else at the other end. Um, with carrots, um, really the main thing you need to be concerned about is something called carrot root fly, which is a really small fly. They're only about maybe one or two millimetres across. And they're unable to fly above about 18 inches. So if you can see, I've, I've put some um, slabs in here upright, um, which is about um, 18 inches off the ground. I've, I've built the level of the soil up as well inside, um, but you don't necessarily have to do that. But this, this, these sides here basically generate a, um, a barrier against the carrot root fly. And since I've been growing carrots in here, I haven't had a problem with them, so I think it's most certainly working. As you can see there, I have sealed the um, the slabs together with a little bit of mastic, but there's there's a there's a crack in there now, and I still don't have a problem. And there is a bit of an air gap down here. Um, so they could potentially get through, but basically when you, uh, you won't have a problem until you actually pull the carrots up and then the smell of the, um, the carrots will attract them and they'll basically lay their eggs in any other carrots that you've left in the ground. So um, if you don't have a, a raised bed like this, what you need to do is put fleece over your carrots so if any carrot root flies come along after you've pulled some of the carrots out, then um, you can uh, you can protect them from going onto the carrots. So in here today, what I'm going to plant is I've got a selection of seeds here. I'm going to plant some um, some salad. I've got some wild uh, rocket, um, and this is from Sutton Seed. I've also got some um, spring onions. Um, that I'm going to grow next to them, and then I've got two varieties of carrots. Um, these are um, these are from um, Thompson and Morgan, and these are. Uh, they're called Rainbow F1 Hybrid, um, and then I've just got some normal, easy to grow, bog standard orange carrots. I always go for the um, the carrots that grow um, sort of longer, um, so you get a better um, yield from your crop. But um, these you can sow anywhere between February and um, and July. These ones here, I think, are pretty much the same. Um, so you can plant these, sorry, April to June, this state's on here, but you, if you are slightly late. Um, I find that the best way to prepare the bed, I dug all of this over, um, give it a good turning over and, and broke the soil up right down. Um, you want the soil to be really loose so that the, the carrots have the best chance of getting in. Um, and don't put any muck in the ground because what you do find with carrots is, um, is the, they'll actually split and form like a fork shape or something like that if you... Uh, if you put muck in. So when you're planting your carrots, don't put any uh, muck in, in the ground. Just, just you, know, you know, you can put other fertilizers like um, Hufon and blood or something like that. And basically you just need to sow these at um, 13, 13 centimeters deep. And a quick tip, I bought all of these seeds at the end of last year. And what you do find is things like carrots and things like that, you know, they're good for, uh, these are good till sort of 2015. And garden centers typically sell all of the seeds off in the late season, so basically, I, I bought all of these for, I think they were, I think they were 30p a pack. So basically, there's only just over a pound's worth of seeds there. As opposed, to if I bought them now, I'd be spending well, they're three pound a packet each. Um, so you know, there's, you know, you can save yourself a lot of money. Anyway, so what I've done is I've um, raked it all over. 
And what I've done, I'll explain why in a minute, but I've put all of the, the sort of lumps of dirt up there where I've raked them up rather than breaking them off because they'll come in, in in a moment. So all you need to do basically is after you've got your ground level is basically just make a um, make a drill where you're going to put your seed and I'm doing this left handed so I'm just going to swap hands. Um, so you'd basically just make a drill in a straight line. Obviously I'm, I've only got short short rows here. Oh, I've got a bit of a root there. Um, so like that and then I'll just continue to do the same thing and with the seed the seed is quite um, quite small um, so I'll just stop the camera for a moment and I'll get them out and I can show you so as you can see the seed is quite small and the easiest way to put them in is you don't want to sow them particularly um, heavily but you just want to sprinkle the seeds along the row don't put too many in I'll just put the rest down here and I'll make another row with those. And the lumps of dirt that I was explaining to you over there, what I've done is I've just got a few of those and if you just break them up in your hand now over the top of the seed, like that, and then that basically varies your seed with fine tilt or, or uh, earth. And then you'll find that as soon as you water them they'll they'll go in and uh, They'll, off they'll go, but as, as I say, what you need to do is most certainly um, you most certainly want to um, make sure that the, the the ground is well dug over, and you've got it down to a very fine um, fine soil, so that the the carrot roots will go down. If you don't do this, what you find is the carrots are quite short and they don't form properly, and um, You'll find that the uh, you, you know you end up with quite a lot of carrots, but unfortunately the you know the roots will only be quite short on them. So obviously you want you want nice long carrots so you can have a nice dinner with them. So that's the carrots. Um, I'll just continue with these, the rest of the um, the, the rest of the rows, and then I'll, um, I'll I'll show you how to put in the um, the wild rocket and the the spring onions. So that's all the carrots in the ground. Um, I've put um, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight uh, rows in there. So at this end here, what I'm now going to put in is the uh, the spring onion. I explained to you earlier. And there's the seed. They're like small black uh, seeds. They're not too small, so they're quite easy to handle. And I'll be just putting one row of these in. So in exactly the same way um, that you did the um, the carrots, what you want to do is just make a, a drill which is around half an inch deep and then sprinkle in your onion seed like that and then again like I did before what I've got is some some lumps of soil and I'm just going to crumble that over the top um, the one thing it's important to note is when you make a carrot bed like this what you don't want to do is uh, have any stones or you want the, the least amount of stones in there as you possibly can um, because again those will make the uh, those will make the carrots split and um, you know they won't be very good so uh, you want to try and get as many stones or any I don't know what that is, a bit of slate out of the, uh, the soil so that's the onions in, as simple as that um, uh, if you don't have a garden you know you can plant these in pots on a windowsill or whatever so don't feel you have to put them in a, in the ground. Now for these last two rows here what I'm going to put in uh, is some rockets. This is really nice to have with your salad. It's got quite a peppery taste if you've not tried rocket before. Now, I don't know if you can see but the seeds are absolutely minute. So um, they're not little. I don't know if you can see that. Let me, uh, let me just show you what they look like. So there you go. They're really really small little 
gingery coloured seeds so I'll, I can't put these in one handed so I'll have to drop the camera to do these but I shall finish these two rows off here with some rocket and as you can see the, the lettuce leaf, the mixed lettuce leaf that I grew in pots um, is ready to go out now so what I'll do is this final bit along here I'll just plant some of those in so um, I can uh, have some lettuce along with me rocket. So now that I've got the lettuce and the rocket in, just give them a really good watering because the top of the the top of the soil is quite dry now, so they they should have a really good watering in. And uh, when you're first watering um, seeds in, if you're watering them in in the greenhouse, um, it's really the only time that you should use um, tap water because um, tap water is sterile and. Uh, Obviously you don't want any bugs to be in the soil when you're, when you're germinating, but when you're putting them out into the open ground like this, most certainly the best thing is always rainwater. So I've got, uh, I've got two, water, two water butts that fill off a, quite a big shed, and um, so I'm never short of rainwater really. So uh, if you have got a source of rainwater, that is considerably better than anything that you could possibly get out of a tap. And all being well, um, in the next couple of weeks um, I should start to get uh, some carrots and uh, some, some s rocket and some spring onion coming up, uh, so some salad to have along with the lettuce that I'm still getting through in the greenhouse, you can just see them there, they're, quite, uh, they're getting quite big now so I'm needing to eat those up ready to put the next lot in. So, as I say, give them a really good watering, and uh, if you can, um, get back to your, your plot. Do give these a water every night, if you can. Uh, obviously, if, if it's been raining, then you don't need to worry, but uh, I always like to keep them uh, well watered for at least the first week or so, so you know you're going to get good germination. So this is the front of the allotment and in here I'm going to be growing Swiss chard and leeks in these first two rows. I dug this area over um, two days ago so it has been rotivated and dug twice this year so I'm sure there's no weeds um, in there worth talking about, there might be the odd one here and there. So in this first row here I'm going to be growing Swiss chard and uh, it's very much like spinach in taste but it's got a lot much, it's got much more colourful um, stalks and the, the seeds look uh, like that. And you don't want to be sowing this too thickly because what, what you want to end up with is the, uh, the plants about six inches apart. So I've, I've made a, a drill here um, with the, um, with the, um, the back of the trowel and I'm going to be putting seeds in about every three inches in a mind that I will be thinning out later and I'll probably pull every other one out but to make sure that I have a, a, a full row of germination um, of germinated seeds I'm going to be putting in more than enough and these seeds don't keep over over wind particularly well so you're better off sowing the entire seed packet to ensure that you get um, a good crop rather than trying to keep the seeds for the next year uh, because the following year they won't germinate very well at all so this, this is one that I find you have to grow um, from fresh seed every year. Parsnips is another one. Never try to, um, even if it says on the packet um, that it's okay, I always buy fresh parsnip seed because I always find that they, um, 
they never very good the following year. So all I need to do now is um, bury them in about half an inch of soil, about 30 mil of soil. And um, what I've done is I've raked up these lumps at the front and then basically I just get the lumps and break them up over the top. And then as soon as I've done this, what I'll do is um, water them in and make sure that they're kept moist at least for the first um, couple of weeks of them being until they start to show on top of the ground. So in the next row um, I'm going to be planting leeks. Now I, I grew these from seed um, about six weeks ago and the trick that I find when you're um, planting out leeks it's much easier if you only sow the um, the leeks really thinly within the pot. You want a, a reasonably deep pot because the roots are going to go all the way to the bottom as you can see there. And you only want to put, um, I used four of these pots for one pack of seeds. So you only, to be honest with you, I only ever need one pot's worth. I'm going to put 30 um, leeks in here so as you can see it comes out of the pot really easily. And the, the way I find is the easiest way to do it is just to put it on the ground like that you've got it out of the pot and then basically find a, a natural gap between the plants and then just pull them apart like that and what you find is you you don't damage the roots so you can just effectively gently tease them out I know one root broke there and that's all you need some people trim the roots I never bother so I've made a series of holes um, about probably about a foot apart and they're probably about um, six inches deep. All I used was the trowel handle to do it. And all you need to do is to put the um, the leak um, into the hole like that. Just just give it a waggle as you, as you put it in. Don't worry about it too much. Um, get another one. As you can see, they come away quite easily. Put one in there. No, you want them to go all the way to the bottom. You don't want to uh, sort of have them at the top of the hole. Just tease one more out. If you if you shake them like this, you'll find that they come out a little bit easy. One in there, and then what I find is if you put them in the hole and then pull them out like that, you'll find that the roots fall to the bottom a little easy. And then the fourth one. Like that. And then all you need to do then is don't don't put the earth back around them. What you need to do is um, water directly into the hole. Don't worry if the hole doesn't completely fill, that, that will fill in time as you water them. So if you just fill the hole like that, you will end up with still a bit of a hole around the um, around the lick like that, but if you kind of water around the top of it, you'll find that the earth falls in the hole as well. If it, if it is particularly dry like it is at the moment. But don't worry if, if the hole doesn't completely fill. Um, that'll be perfectly fine. Now I'll repeat that same thing all the way up to the row, uh, to the end of the row, and then that'll be my 30 leeks in for this year. Um, I'm I'm feeding a family of five, and I find that 30 leeks, to be honest with you, is more than enough. Last year I grew two rows, so there was 60, and we just didn't get through them. Um, so I'm I'm just going to grow one row of them this year. So I'll continue to do the rest of the row. So as soon as you've put them all in. All you need to do then is just basically water them all in, and you'll find that the ground does go round the um, round the top. If you do get a little bit of a hole like that, don't worry about it. Uh, the next time you water it, that'll soon go in. Um, and then, as soon as you've finished watering the row, uh, basically you don't need to do anything there for a few days until, just in case it's uh, if it's dry, then water them again. But if it does rain in the meantime, don't worry about them any longer. Just leave them to grow. Um, if they do flop over a little bit, don't worry about that, they'll soon find their way back upright and they'll, um, and they'll continue to, uh, to grow. At this time of year, it's well worth watering your uh, your beans and peas, make sure that they've got plenty of water. Um, if, it, if it does go dry, um, the best thing you can do for your beans is keep them well watered. I normally put about four cans up the row uh, every night like this, just so we're... Uh, had a bit of a them. nightmare yesterday. I managed to snap the top off uh, my tomato plant there. I'm hoping that 
branch just there will carry on growing up but I've uh, unfortunately snapped that off so uh, these things happen. These are the yellow variety of raspberries that I was explaining to you on previous videos they're just coming into ripe now and we've got plenty more red ones coming along here um, as you can see so we, we picked a bowl last night and we'll probably get some more tonight there's plenty of raspberries coming um, the strawberries have not been uh, too impressive so far I don't know if it's because we had the late frosts um, there are some coming you can see them down there and we have picked some but uh, the, uh, there's nowhere near as many as there were last year so uh, we'll have to see how we get on with them So I hope this uh, episode has been of some use to you. Please subscribe, comment um, below and uh, I'll be producing a few more videos in the next few weeks. So uh, thank you for watching, Jim's Allotment.